This is a clip about resolution and the condition under which two objects are resolved. Diffraction of light at a single slit is essential for your understanding of resolution. So we are briefly revisiting diffraction. Light is incident at a single slit, a central maximum is formed on the screen and further maxima and minima to its right and left. Where these maxima and minima form is dependent on the angle theta. So I can draw an intensity distribution graph showing intensity versus the angle theta. So far to the known phenomenon of diffraction. Now we will have a look at how diffraction is relevant to resolution. This time you have two sources of light and we are looking at the condition under which you can resolve these two sources as two different points rather than just one. I can draw an intensity distribution graph for either of the sources. If the central maxima are far apart, then I will, of course, be able to distinguish between the two different sources. The two red circles with the rings around them represent the diffraction pattern on a screen caused by a circular aperture. Let's have a look at three particular cases. If the central maximum of one of the sources coincides with the first maximum of the other source, then the two points will be well resolved. If the central maximum of one of the sources coincides with the first minimum of the other, the sources will be just resolved. This condition is called the Rayleigh criterion. If the two central maxima are any closer than that, the points will not be resolved. And the red circles and rings show what you see on the screen. Note that the resultant graph of the two intensity graphs has a minimum in the middle as long as the two sources can still be resolved. Now let's have a look at the maths related to the Rayleigh criterion. The two rays of light that cross as they go through the slit or aperture form the angle theta, which should be such that the sources can just be resolved. The slit or aperture has a width or diameter b. According to what you know about diffraction, the first minimum occurs at an angle theta, it is equal to the wavelength divided by the slit width. For a circular aperture, we need to adjust the formula by a factor of 1.22. Now let's have a look at a few applications. The ones that we will be looking at here are CDs and DVDs, radio telescopes and the electron microscope. If we look at a CD under a sufficiently strong microscope, we would see curved tracks consisting of so-called lands and pits, which are basically your binary ones and zeros. The width of these tracks is about 5 times 10 to the power of negative 7 meters, so 500 nanometers. The laser used to read the information has a wavelength of 780 nanometers. For this wavelength, the tracks are already as close together as they could be, so that neighboring tracks can still be resolved. To increase the data beyond the 700 megabyte, the angle of resolution needs to be reduced further. This can be done through a shorter wavelength. The laser used for reading DVDs only has a wavelength of 640 nanometers. For Blu-ray DVD, the wavelength is as short as 405 nanometers, which lies in the blue part of the spectrum of visible light. Radio telescopes have strikingly huge dishes far beyond what we are used to from light telescopes. As an example, there is one in Effelsberg in the Eiffel, which has a dish diameter of 100 meters. For space observations, the wavelength depends on the celestial objects observed, so it can't be changed. They range between, the, between several kilometers and centimeters. The size of the dish is effectively the aperture. Therefore, a huge diameter is advantageous. To increase the resolution further, radio telescopes can be set up in a Y shape. If they are all linked together, the effective aperture can be increased further. To increase it to the maximum aperture possible on Earth, some radio telescopes are linked together around the globe. In the case of the electron microscope, the wavelength is reduced to achieve a higher resolution. What you might not be familiar with is that the electron, often considered a particle, also acts as a wave. This property is used here. The light microscope allows resolution of points that are at least 200 nanometers apart. The electron microscope can resolve points just 0.1 nanometers apart. 
that is about the size of an atom. Let's have a look at a calculation applying this formula. A camera is supposed to be able to take a picture of a line from a safe distance of 5 kilometers. The eyes of the line are just 15 centimeters apart and are supposed to be resolved on the image. First we need to find the angle theta. Since the angle is tiny, we can approximate sine theta by just theta in radians, which is then equal to the distance between the eyes divided by the distance between the line and the camera. So if we put the result for the angle into the formula, we obtain a diameter of 0.02 meters, that is 2 centimeters, for the aperture of the camera.